Let's begin with a review of essential nutrients and nutrition. Vitamins fall into two categories, fat-soluble and water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins include vitamins A, D, E, and K, which absorb in the ileum of the GI tract and in the pancreas. Fat-soluble vitamins tend to accumulate in fat, thus they are more commonly toxic than the water-soluble vitamins as a result of their accumulation within the body. Absorption issues are often seen in diseases such as cystic fibrosis and sprue, and in cases where there is competition with another fat, such as mineral oil. Water-soluble vitamins include all B vitamins, including B1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 12, as well as vitamin C, biotin, and folate. All exit the body quite easily, except folate and B12, which are stored in the liver. B-complex deficiencies tend to cause dermatitis, glossitis, and diarrhea. We will now take a closer look at each vitamin, beginning with the fat-soluble vitamins. Vitamin A is also known as retinol, which can be remembered using Retin-A, which is commonly used to treat wrinkles and acne topically. Retinol is important for retinal function as it makes up the visual pigments of the retina. Lack of retinol results in night blindness and dry skin, while excess retinol causes arthralgias, fatigue, headaches, skin changes, sore throat, and alopecia. Vitamin B1 is more commonly known as thiamine, which is a cofactor in the HMP shunt pathway and in the oxidative decarboxylation of alpha keto acids. Thiamine deficiency is associated with beriberi, which can be remembered by spelling beriberi with a 1 instead of an I, to remember B1 is associated with beriberi. It is also associated with Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, as seen with alcoholism and malnutrition. Riboflavin is a cofactor in both oxidation and reduction reactions. One way to remember this is with FAD and FMN are derived from riboflavin. This reaction creates two molecules of ATP, which can be remembered by B2 equals 2 ATP. Vitamin B2 deficiency is associated with the two C's, chylosis, which is inflammation of the lips, and corneal vascularization. Vitamin B3, also known as niacin, is a derivative of tryptophan using vitamin B6 and is used as a constituent of NAD and NADP. Lack of niacin causes pellagra, the symptoms of which can be remembered with the three Ds diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. Vitamin B5 is a component of the cofactor CoA, which can be remembered using pantothen A is in CoA. The symptoms of B5 deficiency can be recalled with the mnemonic IDEA, which stands for adrenal insufficiency dermatitis, enteritis, and alopecia. Vitamin B6, or pyridoxine, is converted to pyridoxal phosphate 
a cofactor used for transamination, decarboxylation, glycogen phosphorylase, and heme synthesis, and is also required for niacin synthesis from tryptophan. Vitamin B6 deficiency is induced by oral contraceptives, and symptoms include convulsions, hyperirritability, and peripheral neuropathy. Vitamin B12 is a vitamin found only in animal products. You can think of eating a dozen eggs to be getting your B12. B12 is stored primarily in the liver, and B12 deficiency is characterized by neurological symptoms that include abnormal myelination, optic neuropathy, and paresthesia, as well as macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Folic acid is important for synthesis of the nitrogen bases in DNA and RNA and is known to play a role in neural tube formation. Folic acid deficiency is the most common vitamin deficiency in the United States. Folic acid can be obtained through supplements or by eating green leaves, which can be remembered with the mnemonic, you get folate from foliage. Symptoms for folic acid deficiency are similar to vitamin B12 deficiency, including macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, but without the neurologic symptoms. Biotin is commonly used as a cofactor for carboxylation reactions. Biotin deficiency can result in dermatitis and enteritis and may be caused by antibiotics or excessive ingestion of raw eggs. Ascorbic acid is also known as vitamin C. You may recall that vitamin C deficiency was responsible for scurvy, which sailors cured through ingestion of fruits containing vitamin C. Scurvy is characterized by swollen gums, bruising, anemia, and poor wound healing. When present, vitamin C is utilized for collagen synthesis, important for wound healing, iron absorption, hence the link to anemia, and as a cofactor for dopamine beta-hydroxylase, which converts dopamine to norepinephrine. Vitamin D is often touted for being good for bones, and not surprisingly, a lack of vitamin D is linked to rickets in children, characterized by bending of bones, and osteomalacia in adults, which are soft bones. Vitamin D works by increasing intestinal absorption of calcium and phosphate. There are actually two forms of vitamin D. D2, which is consumed in milk, you can remember this with 2% milk is d lightful, and D3, which is formed in sun-exposed skin. Excess vitamin D can actually lead to hypercalcemia, loss of appetite, and stupor. Vitamin E is commonly known for its antioxidant properties, which protects erythrocytes from hemolysis. This can be remembered using E is for erythrocytes. In cases of vitamin E deficiency, there is increased fragility of erythrocytes as well as neurodysfunction. Vitamin K is a critical component for blood coagulation. This can be remembered using K is for coagulation. Warfarin is an anticoagulant that acts by antagonizing vitamin K. Neonates are unable to synthesize vitamin K, thus neonates are given vitamin K injections at birth to prevent hemorrhage. Zinc is an essential component of many enzymes in the body, and zinc deficiency is associated with delayed wound healing, hypogonadism, and decreased hair in adults. 
A lack of zinc may predispose a person towards alcoholic cirrhosis. Now let's move on to a look at the generation and use of energy within the body. The generation of body energy is typically through the production of ATP. ATP is the body's energy source. Production of ATP occurs through one of two routes. The first is aerobic metabolism of glucose, which in the heart and liver produces 32 ATP via the malate aspartate shuttle, and in the muscle produces 30 ATP via the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. The second pathway for producing ATP is anaerobic glycolysis, which produces only 2 ATP for every glucose molecule. In addition to fueling basic body functions, metabolic fuel may be used for exercise. With increasing distance or duration, ATP is obtained from additional sources. ATP is utilized initially from stored ATP, followed by creatine phosphate, anaerobic glycolysis, and then next oxidative phosphorylation, and finally glycogen and free fatty acid oxidation. Another use of metabolic fuel is during fasting and starvation. During fasting and starvation, the overriding goals are to supply the brain and red blood cells with glucose and to preserve protein. During days 1 through 3, blood glucose is preserved through hepatic glycogenolysis and glucose release, adipose release of free fatty acids, muscle and liver shifting to use free fatty acids instead of glucose, hepatic gluconeogenesis from A, peripheral tissue lactate and alanine, and B, adipose tissue glycerol and propionyl CoA from odd chain free fatty acid metabolism. After day three, hepatic formation of ketone bodies to maintain muscle protein loss takes place, particularly in the brain and heart. After several weeks, the main source of energy for the brain becomes ketone bodies. Assessment of a patient's nutritional status involves a review of the patient's medical history to identify metabolic requirements and chronic diseases, a review of the diet history to detect potential deficiencies and or toxicities, a physical examination that focuses on muscle mass and strength and looks for evidence of vitamin and or mineral deficiency, and a standard series of laboratory tests to assess organ function, fluid status and electrolyte balance, and identify any nutritional deficiencies. Nutritional deficiency may be due to an eating disorder. There are two eating disorders that are recognized as psychiatric maladies. The first is anorexia nervosa, which is severe weight loss resulting from excessive dieting and exercise and a distorted body image. Anorexia typically results in severe weight loss, anemia, amenorrhea in women, metatarsal stress fractures, and electrolyte disturbances. There is often coexistence of depression in patients with anorexia. The other disorder is bulimia nervosa, typified by binge eating followed by purging from self-induced vomiting or use of laxatives. In these patients, the body weight is often normal. However, there are signs of parotitis, enamel erosion, alkalosis, and Russell's sign, which are dorsal hand calluses from inducing vomiting.